So, you want to know all about the new features of the Giant Shadow update, do you? Well, you've definitely come to the right place. I've got a list chock full of new features, important balance changes, and weapon tweaks as well, so you can be fully prepared for all of that stuff once it's changed with the new map and the patch that drops tomorrow, Tuesday 13th of December. Go grab yourself a cup of tea, or whatever drink really takes your fancy, and get ready for that information. Make sure you leave a comment letting me know what you're most excited about in this change list, and hit that like button as well, that'd be really appreciated. So first up, we all know the patch is bringing the new map Giant Shadow and the new gadget, the Grenade Crossbow. The map will come with all of the major game modes, Conquest, Rush, War Pigeons, TDM, and Domination. At this stage though, I've not been told it will be in the operation cycle as it doesn't directly link to another map that's in the game. The grenade crossbow can fire either two of the frag or high explosive grenades and it will be a support class gadget. The second most important thing coming with this patch, spectator mode is finally arriving for Battlefield 1. DICE have added the much anticipated feature into the game at long last, and I'm sure that will delight many creative members of the community. We still need password protected custom servers before we can really get working on some cool stuff, but for now the addition sure shows that DICE are moving in the right direction. Spectator will allow anyone to join a server essentially as a set of cameras or the director of a set where you can observe the battle in a more cinematic way. There are tools for controlling depth of field, there's various filters that you can play around with, and there's new and improved transitions between each different camera that's available as well. Make sure you go and give that a try. Something else that's coming in this patch that's really showing actually that DICE are listening to the community when it comes to improvements over Battlefield 1 is a new custom game option. Not a new custom game, a custom game option. So that's one of the server options you can turn on and off if you rent your own server. It's called Standard Issue Rifles. And I'm sure as you might be able to guess, it grants access to all classes the ability to use the Standard Issue Rifle for the faction that you're playing. So for example, if you're playing as the Austro-Hungarian Empire and you're on a server with the Standard Issue Rifle option turned on, all of the classes will have access to the Gewehr M95 rifle. And if you were playing on the USA faction, you'd have access to the M1903 Springfield. With this option though, you are limited to only the Iron Sights variant of that rifle. You won't be able to use a Marksman variant rifle on the Assault class, you'll simply be given access to the Iron Sights variant. These standard issue rifles will only be enabled on rented servers, so ones that aren't official DICE servers, and it's been added at the request of the community, but it can be mixed in with other server settings as well. You could disable all other weapon types and just have standard issue rifles turned on, and it would create that World War I trench warfare feeling if that's what you wanted. Moving on now to some of the weapon tweaks that are coming with this patch, and the shotguns saw some action. DICE heard our cries regarding some of the variants vastly outperforming others, or just simply feeling overpowered, and they've rebalanced almost all of them to give them more meaningful benefits and weaknesses over each other. So they've really had a complete pass on the shotguns, and you should notice some fairly big differences. The Model 10A Hunter and the Factory were the ones that stood out the most according to DICE at being unintentionally powerful at range, dropping people in one hit where they really, really shouldn't have. DICE have reduced the one hit kill range on the M97 Trench Gun, the Model 10A Shotgun and the Sawn Off Shotgun to try and help clear this up a bit, and they've added an extra pellet to all variants of the M97 trench gun to try and make it more of an attractive choice. All of the backboard variants of the shotguns have had their range improved a little bit, and the accuracy of the 12 gauge automatic has been buffed so people can take advantage of its high rate of fire and thus its damage potential. Now the fact that it fires so much faster than other shotguns might not be too great and then buffing its accuracy might make it a little bit overpowered 
But again, all of these changes will have some time to settle in. And if you notice that this is not really that much of a great change, on paper it sounds a little bit strange, make sure you get on the forums and tell the DICE developers that you think this change might not be so great. Switching from the shotguns to the LMGs now, those have received another further buff in this patch as well. In the last patch, DICE made some more subtle changes, but here they felt more was needed to be done. First of all, the inaccuracy penalty that all LMGs have when they start to be fired in ADS has now been tweaked. The second shot fired now has the same recoil for all variants of that one LMG. So, to give you an example, the Lewis gun's second round recoil, when fired, is now the same across the low weight, the optical, and the suppressor variants. Previously, the optical variants were far superior, and DICE have moved to change that and offer a lower recoil kick to all of the LMGs that are in the support class. Secondly, a lot of the reload times were also changed so they sync better with the on-screen animations for the LMGs. That means some of them saw a reload increase, like the Masson going from 2.45 seconds to 2.65 seconds for a short reload, and others like the BAR saw a reload decrease in time, moving its short reload from 2.9 seconds to 2.8 seconds. And thirdly, specifically to the Lewis gun, it now overheats slower than it did before. It now overheats at 50 bullets compared to its previous value of 35 bullets. A couple of other small notable mentions from the weapon changes are the following. The Martini Henry has seen a small bug fix where it would deal the incorrect amount of damage depending on what body part of the target you ended up hitting. It's now subject to a lower multiplier when hitting body parts other than the upper torso, meaning it won't hit as hard as it used to, and it now sits in line with the rest of the bolt-action rifles in the class. Ripperoni, it looks like the martini times are over. And the Hell Regal has had its first shot recoil multiplier increased from 1.8 to 2. That means it'll kick a little bit more when you start firing now, and it's had its horizontal recoil bumped from 0.76 to 0.8. Overall, that makes the weapon a little bit harder to control. Moving on to some vehicle changes now, DICE have given the landship a rather big buff in this patch. It'll have hardly escaped your notice that the landship was probably the most underused of all of the big armoured vehicles in the game, and so DICE have moved to try and make it a more attractive choice. First of all, teammates will now be able to spawn directly into the landship, like they already do on the heavy tank. That should help it become more of a mobile spawn point, and players will stay in the tank to use the powerful side cannons that it has available, which the heavy tank doesn't have access to. Secondly, the driver abilities on the tank have been buffed to make them more effective, and thirdly, the landship now has the same level of armor as the heavy tank, and that makes the landship a lot more powerful. However, the landship's tracks are still its weakest point. They're completely exposed, meaning despite all of the buffs it's now got, it should still be very clear to infantry, and most importantly, assault players, how to take this tank down. Something else for the vehicles, a big bug which Levelcap spoke about the other day in one of his videos, has now been fixed as well. The different positions in which the cannons on a vehicle would fire in third and first person. Now in third person, a vehicle weapon could be fired from a much higher point on your screen, and that would allow tanks to sit behind cover and fire shells over the top of it without even exposing themselves to the enemy on the other side. That's now been fixed, and you should notice that in third person, the glitch can no longer be exploited. Time to move on to the gadgets now, and DICE have changed quite a few things here, and I'll start off with one of the most interesting on the list, the Revive Syringe. Now, the developers have added a short cooldown on the syringe in between uses in this patch. That should fix the Revive Train issue, where a medic could just simply swoop in and revive like five players at once, or in just a matter of seconds. Battlefield 4 fixed this problem from Battlefield 3, where there was a revive train issue, but we kind of went backwards in time 
both literally and in terms of game mechanics in Battlefield 1, and we got the revive train issue back. But here, DICE are implementing a fix. It means you can revive one player, and there will be a cooldown. You can revive another player, there's a cooldown. You can revive another player, and there's a cooldown. Counter to that, though, and this is the interesting bit, if you're near an ammo crate at the time you use a syringe to revive a player, there will be no cooldown effect in place. So, if lots of players are dead on the ground around an objective, let's say, get a support player to chuck down an ammo crate, and then you can just go to town on the revives. This change is to promote team play, according to DICE, so that the support and the medic work together, but it doesn't directly wreck the extreme power and the extreme importance of the revive syringe. Now, I'm not 100% convinced on this move. We already have enough medics in Battlefield 1 at the moment who really just don't revive anybody. And now they've got a cooldown on their syringe. I don't think that that was the right way to go. We need more people reviving in this game. And personally, I don't have a problem with the revive train in the medics. Battlefield 1 is a very fast paced game. So if a medic can revive three players in a matter of seconds, to me... That kind of just fits the gameplay style that's being offered here. I think they're putting another barrier in place for the medics, so they just stop reviving people. The ammo crates themselves, along with the medic crates, have seen a buff here, staying on the ground for longer, supplying more health and more ammunition before they disappear. Good move there, DICE. They've also added a feature where an ammo or a med crate is dropped right at a player's feet if the area surrounding that player is not suitable for one of those crates to be put down. This should help reduce the amount of times you think you've dropped one when you really haven't. And finally, let's talk about the soldier movement. DICE have been working hard to improve the movement system in Battlefield 1 and overall make it feel more responsive. Since this patch, you should now be able to sprint straight out of crouch and prone positions, which in the previous version was a little bit bugged, and sometimes it would cause a player to simply stop moving altogether and they fixed an issue with the toggle zoom as well. After you've come out of prone, sometimes it would get stuck in what kind of looked like half ADS and half non-ADS. It was really, really weird. They fixed as many issues as they possibly can, but they're still interested to know if you've seen any more, and they will try and fix those if you report them on the forums. I've linked the forums down below in the description. You can go and click on that and create whatever post you like and tell the developers anything you want to. So that's a damn big list, and there's still more in that list that I didn't mention. If you'd like to see a list of all of the patch notes, correct as of the 8th of December, I've linked a PDF in the description that I was provided by DICE last week. It's worth noting that this version of the patch notes are subject to change, and the ones that go live later today or tomorrow morning could be slightly different dependent on what the developers could get in and what they may have had to leave out based on time constraints. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to let me know down in the comments section which of these changes you're most excited about, which ones do you like, which ones you don't like, is there something in there you thought would be changed but I didn't mention. Make sure you let me know down in the comments today and as I said at the start of the video, if you could drop me a like on this one, that would be absolutely awesome. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.